Today, I'm going to be speaking about powerful prayer for healing. And every, the, the last, the series that I'm on to now is about powerful prayers to experience the miraculous. And we look into Jehoshaphat, a powerful prayer of deliverance. And then David, powerful prayer for breakthrough. And now, powerful prayer for healing. Let's go to 2 Kings 20. And we're going to read from verses 1 to 7, and then I will break it down. So in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. What an ominous word from a prophet. But this is so powerful, as you saw the turnaround and what Hezekiah did, and therefore what God did on his part. It says, then, then Hezekiah turned his face, his face towards the wall, and he prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth with a loyal heart, have done what was good in your sight, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened that before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him saying, return, go back. Tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you in this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. So they took a lump of figs, laid it on his boil and he recovered the severe crisis of hezekiah second kings 21 it says in those days interesting days because he was also facing a war the king of assyria who had advanced against him he was sick he was near death and isaiah the prophet the son of amos went to him and said thus saith the lord set your house in order for you shall die and not live. Now, the interesting thing about this prayer is that the man lived. God added 15 years to his life. He did eventually die, just like Lazarus. God rose him from death and the grave. He did eventually die. But God is in control of your life, and it's never too late for divine intervention. He had a boil that was cancerous and it was a terminal disease. Why did God get, send the prophet to him? He could have just made him die. Obviously the fact that God gave him the word ahead before it happened is because God was looking to see how he would react to what he heard. This is a very exciting and intriguing story, people of God, and we can learn a lot of revelation from it so for positive wisdom and action in our lives. At 39 years old, the kingdom of Hezekiah was not secure. He didn't have a successor, a son or a daughter to put in place. He prayed, God healed him, he had a son Manasseh. Number two, to make matters worse, it was at the time when the king of Assyria had advanced to invade and conquer Judah. This king was very, very powerful, and he boasted in his power that he has destroyed other cities, and therefore you cannot withstand me. And he went on, but Hezekiah prayed, and God gave him victory, and he, God, destroyed the Assyrian king. Number three, he needed to ensure that the king of Assyria 
and other Assyrians would not cut off the water supply for the Israelites. You know, when you go to Israel and you will go and one of your tour is to go in the tunnel that Hezekiah built so that water will flow from Gihon down into Israel and they will always have fresh water. And so in this story, we will see five great revelation. Number one, our God is greater. And it doesn't matter how far how our God is greater. Then we're going to see God's kindness when he sees humanity with humility. His kindness when he sees humanity with humility. And number three, his willingness to work with us and for us. With us and for us. Faith without works is dead. God would do his part, but Hezekiah had to do his part. Number four, the way God, like a father, savior, helper, can use us to co-create our future with his help. The man created, co-created with God the future of Israel and his own future. And number five, it is never too late for miraculous divine intervention. Oh, people of God, let's just raise a hallelujah right there. Let's just raise a hallelujah. We don't care how far the situation is deadish, how far this thing is over, how far this crisis is unbeatable. God is greater. You have to say deadish because it is dying. God said it is dying. You will die. You will die. If something doesn't change in your equation, you will die. And the reason why God could even go to the man and say that is, in other words, if you do certain things, you will live. Oh, people of God, it's never too late for a miracle. Let's just worship God right now. Put up your hands and worship him. Worship him in the chat. Worship him in the chat and declare it is never too late for my miracle. I want you to declare because I'm declaring it for my miracle. <laughs> you remember what God teaches me, I teach you. The revelation that he gives me, I give it to you. I work it, you work it, we get the victory. And I'm praying for your victory and I ask you to pray for my victory. And so it's never too late for miraculous divine intervention. Now let's look at Hezekiah, powerful prayer for healing. He needed more time. He was 39 years old. He never had a son. Judah could have been devastated. Israel could have been devastated. So in 2 Kings 20 verses 2 and 3, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Wow turned his face to the wall and prayed. The even what he prayed and how he prayed is very strategic. Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly, turned his face to the wall, what is the strategy? In other words, he shut out everyone and looked to God. He decided only God can help me. It reminds me of the psalmist that says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from when cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. I can understand why David in the cave, he had no one to help him. And he had to cry out from his belly to the Lord God Almighty who alone can deliver him from a king who has assigned an army of people to kill him. It was all a lie. He didn't deserve it. But so did Jesus. He suffered and died on a cross even though he didn't deserve it. And you know, David cried out. And now Hezekiah cried out to the Lord God Almighty. You know, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 2, 7 and 8, that God stores up sound wisdom for the upright. For the upright. There's something about him negotiating covenant promises with God, talking about God, about the lifestyle that he lived. And this was very important because his father was Ahaz. 
Hezekiah's father was Ahaz, and the Bible says he was an evil king. And so he had to say, God, you see how I've not tried to walk in the ways of my father? You see how I have been walking in uprightness? And I, I, and, and, and you, I need wisdom now? It says you're a shield to those who walk uprightly, God. I remind you that I have not been like my father Ahaz. And you, you said you guard the paths of justice and you provide the way of his saints. People of God, this is something you can write down and use when you are mediating for yourself and interceding even for others because there is a promise here. If you are pursuing righteousness with God, if you are pursuing living an upright lifestyle, there are certain promises that God will give to you. God is merciful to everybody. He's merciful to every sinner. But now he is negotiating because his lifestyle was so different from his wicked father. And so we can see that prayer is not just repeating the same thing over and over again. Sometimes it requires praying by the power of the Holy Spirit and with the brain engaged. It can also be mediation before God for strategic, tactical, and appealing to God's heart for covenant and asking God for wisdom. What can I do? Prayer is powerful. We're talking about the powerful prayer for healing. And this man walked us through what he did. And God put it there in the Bible so that we can pray with greater understanding and authority. Understanding precedes authority. God is gracious. God is merciful. But revelation and understanding precedes authority, people of God. Greater authority. You have authority according to what you know. God had to make Moses know that his authority before Pharaoh was that God will make him like God before Pharaoh. In other words, I'm going to give you fresh anointing, fresh authority, fresh revelation, and fresh power so that you can go before Pharaoh and feel safe. Understanding and revelation comes before greater authority. And then when we look at this, God's dramatic action to Ezekiah, we're talking about powerful prayer for healing. In 2 Kings 20, 4 and 5, it says it happened that before Isaiah could even leave the middle court, before Isaiah left the palace, <laughs> the word of the Lord came to him and said, return, go back, go back. After you left, that man went to, the, to put his face to the wall and he humbled himself before me and he wept bitterly and he cried out unto me. And go tell him, he is the leader of my people, said the Lord, that the God of David, your father, the God of David, your father, and this is the key, people of God, the God of David, your father. God says, don't appeal to me on your father, because your father Ahaz was wicked. But the God of David, your father, there's a covenant that you could appeal to. And that covenant is what I'm going to bring to deliver you today. The God of David. Would you believe, people of God, that everybody who believe in Jesus Christ, the son of David, the everlasting covenant of David is also yours? You can use this in mediation. Somebody say a hallelujah here. Somebody say a hallelujah here. Isaiah 55 and 3, it says, incline your ear and come to me. Hear revelation and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Oh my word, <laughs> I don't have to call my biological father name. 
but I can call on the God, the Father of David. And because I believe in Jesus Christ, who calls himself the Son of David, then I also am heir to the covenant blessings of David and the sure mercies of David. You know, this is why God instructed me to, to make a difference between the Shekinah glory of God, because we're always talking about the Shekinah glory of God, and it is great. It can come cloud by night, fire by day. It can divide a sea, and his own children walk on dry ground, and the same sea that divides swallow up the enemy. I mean, the Shekinah glory of God with all his angels that he will set charge over you. It is power great glory. It brings him glory. He uses Shekinah glory to bring glory on earth. But then God told me, understand another aspect of my glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he says, name that glory, Kyle glory, because it's comprehensive. It, it not just goes without seeing the invisible beings, but it goes with you walking in wisdom, allowing yourself to pray like Hezekiah. It has, it comes with wisdom. It comes with authority. It, it engages an angel army to fight for you because Hezekiah couldn't win the battle without angel's army. It, it talks about truth. It talks about righteousness, right living. It is comprehensive. It is holistic. And that glory is in every believer. And this is why this is very timely for the church. Because we need to pray like the son of da like David, son of God. He says, awake my glory, awake my glory. He says, my heart is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. In other words, my heart is fixed on you. It will not be moved. You will not leave me and I will not leave you, God. Awake my glory. I'm in a, a cave. I'm dying like a beggar. I don't even have food sometimes. Awake my glory because the Kyle glory of God, including peace, it includes in prosperity, it includes victory. It includes a battle, but like Hezekiah, not just a battle by you alone, but a battle by the Lord of angels army and a battle with you using the wisdom of God, the power of God, the strategy of God and what God tells you to do. Oh, somebody raise a hallelujah. If only you can get this people. Church of Jesus Christ, expand your mind. Don't stay in your little box with the revelation you know today and think you know things. People of God, I mean, if you don't humble yourself, then you cannot go and grow in the greatness and manifest the greatness of the Lord because you think you know Genesis to the revelation. But all of us need to grow in faith and grow in increasing glory. God told me that in 2020, this year, and for the 20th, for the 2020s, 2021, right down until we get into 2030, you better grow in faith and you better grow in ever increasing glory. And you cannot grow in ever increasing glory without revelation. And you cannot grow in faith if you don't get revelation. Because you have to understand the prayer of faith. You have to understand the fight of faith. You have to understand how to walk in faith. You have to understand that faith needs manifestation. If you have faith without manifestation, something is going on, people of God. Kyle glory is the powerful, great glory of Jesus Christ inside everybody who believes in him. Everybody who believes in him, the God of Abraham came down to, 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 to Abraham. Oh, and make him like God before the enemy. The God of Abraham took a boy like David, 17 years old, and killed a Goliath. Come on, people of God. That's not just natural. That's supernatural. That's glory manifesting in human beings. Peter says, wait, uh -huh, wait, I left the upper room. The spirit of the living God is inside of me now. The same spirit that made Jesus Christ as a man do good works, drive out demons, do all kinds of things. It's in me now. So here it is, a crippled man, want to be healed. I, Peter, can speak the word of the Lord and that man's crippled muscles and joint will hear the word of the Lord coming from my mouth and it will be like God creating through me. Woo! 
Raise a hallelujah, people. Raise a hallelujah. Put your hands on your head and say, God, let me get this. Don't be just an ordinary Christian, people. Let's move to another level because God's glory must be seen through us. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but God's glory in your belly must be seen by the world. The whole earth is going to be filled with the glory of the Lord. What does that mean? It means that people will see his glory through ordinary you. A little ordinary woman called Jael was the one who destroyed the enemies of Israel. A little ordinary woman called Esther was the one that saved Israel. A little ordinary man called, called Gideon was the one that delivered Israel from the Midianites. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not by might, not by my power failed disciples like Peter was the one that God made a rock and built his church through the revelation that came out of his mouth are you hearing what I'm saying a blasphemer called Paul you know I mean trying to kill crucify and stop the church and everything God touched the man's heart and in humility he became the greatest apostle that wrote most of the New Testament oh that, 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 that saying, I used to sing this song like, God arise and his enemies be scattered. Arise from where? God doesn't need to arise anymore in heaven. What that psalmist is saying, arise, O God, in me. Let the Kyle glory of Jesus Christ in my belly arise. Arise upon your servant Moses. Arise upon your servant Esther. Arise upon the most unlikely Peter. Arise, let God arise. Oh, Hezekiah prayer is a prayer that we can use. God said to him, the powerful prayer is a covenant prayer in humility and faith with mediation, obedience and faith. Prayer matters. I said prayer matters. Prayer can change any situation, any call out, any kind. Prayer can change anything. I mean, you can dead for four days and God make you alive. Come on. I say prayer can do anything. Divide a Red Sea, make a crippled man walk, make the dumb speak, make the blind see. Hello. The healing power of prayer even changed poisonous water and made it sweet water so that the Israelite could drink and be protected. Oh, people, just praise God, praise God. God said to Hezekiah, I have heard your prayer. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know yet. Remember, part of prayer is to get the revelation and the wisdom and the strategy of what to do. He says, I've seen your tears. In other words, Hezekiah, your broken heart, when you weep bitterly, it broke my heart. I am your father, and it broke my heart too. You don't have to be a big macho man before God. <laughs> your strength is nothing. He wants to see humble hearts. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. He said, surely I will heal you. Oh, that's a vow. It means I vow upon my own self as God is God, as God is the great I am, as God is, is the, the creator. I will heal you. It's my vow. People of God, healing is connected to purpose. Be sure that when you're sick, it finds you serving God. And you have a purpose to live. Healing is connected to purpose. God, he said, surely I will heal you. And then God tell you why. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. Notice, pray in secret, pray in silence, but know when you need the house of the Lord to pray for you. Yeah, don't, 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 you don't have to suffer alone, people of God. There are times, he said, do both. Pray privately, but let the church pray for you. James 5, 14 and 15 says this way. If, is, any man, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church to pray over him 
And if the oil is possible, let him anoint with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is your healer. In the name, the same God that healed Hezekiah became flesh, dwell among us with the name Jesus the Christ. And then it says the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, notice the prayer of faith, different kind of prayer, will save the sick, bring healing. The Lord will raise him up to do mighty things. We're talking about what Hezekiah went through. And if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven. Please, oh, mighty God, this is so great. What is he saying? The prayer of faith is different from a normal prayer. Because number one, it save you, it restore you and give you strength. And if there's anything legally being used against you, that prayer of faith will make you forgiven. Strategically, the prayer of faith. Oh, people of God, prayer, mercy for the upright, the humble, the faithful and the prayerful servants. Do you know what God said to him in 2 Kings 20 verse 6? I will add to your days 15 years. Specific. None of us are going to live forever. But you have to know why God healed you and saved you in the first place. Because God helped you if you don't. You don't understand the purpose of your life. Why you're healed. I mean, if you are, you're a Christian, it's, it's okay to die because you know you're going to be with God. But this healing was connected to a purpose. He says, I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own sake. Woo! There you go. A bombshell. I am healing you, Hezekiah, for my sake. You think it's just because I need to practice a, a healing here? No, it's not just practice. I'm healing you for my own sake, number one. And number two, for the sake of my servant, David. Whoa! I'm healing you for my sake. I'm healing you for the sake of the covenant that talks about the sure mercies of David, the everlasting covenant. And also, it is because it is my people that this Assyrian king is coming against. God gave five gifts to Hezekiah. The gift of extended life, 15 years. This happened at 39. He died at 54. He gave Hezekiah the gift of wisdom to create a tunnel to protect the Israelite and to keep fresh water coming to Israel. They say that that tunnel was one of the greatest engineering feat in that season, in that time. It, it was just engineering how they found a crack in the wall and they made it wide and connected the Gishon Spring, which is a fresh water, flow through it and navigate. Oh, I, I tell you, I went to Israel, I walked through that tunnel and saw the amazing thing. They had to dig underground just to protect themselves from the king of Assyria. Number three, he got a son that succeeded him. He had a son called Manasseh. And then number four, victory against the Assyrian army. Hezekiah f prayed again for God to help him against king, the, king, the king of Assyria. And number five, knowledge of natural medicinal treatment of his cancer. Oh my word. Powerful prayers for healing. Second Kings 20 verse 7. Isaiah said to him, take a lump of figs. And they took that lump of figs, laid it on the boil, and Hezekiah recovered. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. He, he lived for 15 years, and in that 15 years, oh, God, he did mighty things for the sake of himself, for the sake of God, for the sake of the Israelites and for the sake of the covenant of David that is an everlasting covenant. The sure mercies of David is yours. People of God, I wanna pray for you today. This is a privilege that everybody has. Oh, I beg you. 
don't live one more day without Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not talking about just don't live one more day not going to church. No. <laughs> of course, sometimes it's locked down so you can't go to the physical building. I'm talking about your heart condition. You have to, yeah, David says, my heart is steadfast, oh God. My heart is steadfast, oh God. Now we see why God says David was a man after his own heart. Your heart is fixed on God. Your heart is focused. I was speaking to a group in a conference uh, on, on Friday, and they asked, what is the key, do you think, is, is the key to grow in authority and for the glory of God to manifest in, in your life? And I said, your heart has to be focused, a steadfast heart. I will serve God with all my heart, with all my life, with all my money, with all my time, with all my gifts. I am sold out to Jesus Christ and I am focused on obeying my master. I'm focused on him manifesting his glory through me for me when I need it, <laughs> and to, to others. Focused life, a focused life, not wavering. I am not wavering. I am not there for the devil to use me sometimes. I am sold out to God. My heart is steadfast. And he said he will build his church and the gates will not prevail against it. And I am steadfast to serve him in his mission. And he says that the whole earth is going to be filled with his glory. I am steadfast to serve him in his mission to fill the whole earth with the glory of the Lord. He says that the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. I am steadfast in spiritual warfare to protect his church. Steadfast with my tithes, steadfast with my offerings. I am steadfast on God. I am focused like David. And then I pray, awake my glory, O God. And I go before God with revelation, with understanding, tactically for the assignments that he gives to me. O oh, people of God, you don't have to live with like a Christianette going to church because everybody tell you to go to church. No, God wants your heart. He wants your heart. He wants to say, that is my son. I'm not sharing him with the devil. He wants to say, that is my daughter, and I'm not sharing her with the devil. You know, one of the names of God is Jehovah Kana, the jealous one. He's jealous for you. He's jealous for you. The Bible in, in Solomon says, he is jealous for me. He is jealous for me. People of God, he loves you so much. He will not share you with the devil. And I ask you today to receive Jesus, not only as your savior, but with your, as your Lord. Lord means, here I am, Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. I will do it. You know, God says, really, Goliath? You're going to curse my people? You're going you're gonna to paralyze them? You, you wait until David hear you. Let David hear. Say it one more time before David. You say it before Saul, he's paralyzed. You say it before the mighty soldiers, you're paralyzed. Say it before that young man, David, and you see what happened. And Goliath spoke before David, and that was it. Moments later, Goliath's head was off his body. Praise God Almighty. You hear what I'm saying here? This is a serious time and a glorious time for you. Jesus is offering you himself. Will you offer him yourself? Pray with me now. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I believe in you and I receive you. From my, from my heart as my Savior and my Lord. Help me to serve you. Help me to serve you, O oh God, with all my heart, with all my life, because you can count on me to serve you. I feel like I don't have much to offer you, but whatever I have, it is yours. I am yours. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Oh, let's raise a hallelujah. Just pray for those who are accepting Jesus Christ today as their personal Savior. Oh, people of God. Oh, people of God, pray. Just pray for them right now. And if you made that prayer, welcome to the Kyle family and the Kyle community. We have a community that is global. And we want to disciple you. We want to help you. We want to talk to you about water baptism eventually. Yes, in your nation, where, you're na where, where you are, you can be water baptized. And, and how you can serve Jesus more. And you can write to me at kail at patfrancis.org and put right there in the chat, I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. Just write that to me right now in the chat so that we know that you accepted Jesus today. That is the witness. We witness your salvation. And then if you want to privately write to me, write to me at kail at patfrancis.org. And you will see the spelling right there in the chat on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you are watching, Instagram. You will see the spelling of kail. So you can write to me at kail at patfrancis.org. 